So Janetta is the founder of Bull City Music School, director of religious education at Holy Cross Catholic Church, a powerful leader, a social impactor, somebody who is very involved in the community and uh, someone I look up to in, in so many ways and aspire to be like. So Janetta, so excited to have you today. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really happy to be on and I was like, who is that girl you were talking about? Like, is that me? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> anyone who knows you is going to vouch for it. You, yeah, you are a rock star human being in, um, anyway. The world needs more people like you, and that's exactly what we're doing today is sharing, okay, what does it actually look like to live the life that you live? What are the lessons you've learned? We're going to get into a lot of that. Let's start with your story, right? How did you end up here? And I want to hear, like, obstacles, the whole juicy story of how you ended up running a multi-site music school here in Durham, right? Um, mm -hmm. Advocate, really active in the Black arts community, like, that is the now, and, and as one of my mentors would say, is people see the glory, but they don't know the story. Woo! Uh, right? So I want to hear... Right? And play the church chords. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And it actually was a pastor, so that's how, that's good. That's Pastor Brian in Toronto. Shout out to Pastor Brian if he ever watches this, man. That's beautiful human. Um, so what is the story behind where you Ooh. are now? Oh, all right. So everybody wants the tea. What brought me here? Yeah. Um, and I'll be honest. I mean, what brought me here was a prior marriage that ended and um, I stayed. So that's it in one sentence. That's what brought me here. And I ended up staying. I started a new chapter in life. I remarried and um, had another baby. Mm -hmm. And it was really the birth of my last son that I should say turned everything around for me. Uh, and my family as well. Um, I have two older children that are from my first marriage. Um, I gained a bonus daughter. And then I now have my youngest, which I, I call my co-worker. So he may pop in here, you know, y'all, you know, anytime. And I have another co-worker behind me sleeping on the job. So he may come up. Right. And that's Duke. Um, that is Duke. Sir Duke. Sir Duke. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah got Duke it. Ellington. So my, my youngest, I was, um, teaching here in the Durham Public Schools system. When I moved here from Tampa, Florida, came here, got a job, hit the pavement, didn't stop, dress, heels, everything. Had to get a job. So I landed a job here at W.G. Pearson Middle School. And I was there two years and the school was closing. The year that the school was closing was also the year that I was pregnant with my youngest. I was a very high risk pregnancy. I mean, looking at me on the outside, you would think that I was completely the pillar of health, but no, um, I wasn't. I was a um, high risk pregnancy, having to see my maternal fetal medicine doctor, as well as my regular OB doctor and, you know, poke, prod, and just the whole thing. So, wow. um, as my school was closing, I got reassigned to another school without my permission. And my husband's in law enforcement and I called him up. I was like, I said, what? He was like, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? Hold on, you're talking too fast. You know, you're talking way too fast. And I said, I've gotten assigned to X school. He said, you can turn in uh, your letter of resignation today. And he said, wow. not, no, but Hell no. Wow. There you go. You can say that on here. Don't yeah. worry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and he was like, mm -mm, mm, turning your resignation today because he said, you're pregnant. I will not be there. So I like him. Yeah. Yeah. He was just like, mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah. mm -mm, no, 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 no. And I also have another certification, um, K through six general education, in addition to being music certified. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking, I was like, well, I, got, I have another certification. Can I just go teach elementary ed? And, you know, I'm the type of parent, my children come first. And then, you know, wherever I'm going to teach, whatever I'm going to do, it has to be able to fit into my children's life. Right. So... That place wasn't it. And um, came on home, you know, came on home, 
Little did I know that at our last professional development, um, that my baby was going to be born a couple of weeks later. Wow. So my youngest son um, was a micro born at 26 weeks. Wow. Yeah. Like my water broke on my birthday and my son was born like the next day. It was like a complete, like just chain of e events that happened. So life got turned completely upside down, like again. And he stayed in the hospital for 82 days. And within that time, you know, being in the NICU and, you know, having this preemie that we had no idea how life was getting ready to be. My right. husband said, there is no one else better suited on this planet to take care of our son other than you. That nobody else can do it. So if I got to work extra off duty shifts, that's what I got to do. You're coming home. Wow. So, you know, being home, I um, got a taste of freedom. <laughs> got a taste of freedom. You know, I was already unhappy with teaching in the system. And that's what I'm going to refer to it as. I was very unhappy teaching in the system. I went to school to be a music teacher, but I ended up having to teach other subjects, which I didn't mind because I was able and capable, but my heart lies within music. And, and then let me just be honest, I was given $200 to teach three grade levels of piano. That was your budget? Your year budget? To teach three grade levels. You can't even buy, you can't even print paper for $200. I, I was done. I said, I'm tired of, you know, having to prove that I can get blood out of a turnip. I'm tired of that. <laughs> wow. So, you, know, you know, when I moved here, like I said, I was going through a divorce and I didn't have the extra money to go in my pocket to outfit my classroom, decorate it, buy extra music, buy extra. And I said, I'm done. I can't do this. If I'm going to put this much blood, sweat, and tears into building up something that can be snatched away from me simply because, oh, we don't have our enrollment went down and, you know, you're a music teacher, so you're not essential. Right. You're way down the list. Right. right. You're done. And I, I adopted the new saying and new philosophy. I do the quitting now. Right. Yes. Jeanette, I want, I want to just put a brief okay. thought and, and interject something here because okay. it, it maps my life and others' lives as well, is that you had a radical adjustment, let's say, in your life. It seemed like out of your control, one after another after another. None of these things you would have wished on yourself or even wished on people that you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. right. right. So, so how do you look back on that? Because But it seems like it was the path of your liberation, which is probably the next part of your story. How do you look back on those unexpected transitions or whatever you want to call them, challenges that really did lead to you to be who you are now thank god i went through them now i know what i'm made of all right yeah say a little more about that for other people that may not have may not be on the other side of them and just in the middle of them and wonder why the hell is this happening to me well when you're going through the storm you never understand why you're in the storm it's not until you come out of it and then you look back and say, oh, these were the lessons that I learned from this. This is setting me up for something that's getting ready to come down the line that's gonna be you know, a skill set or um, some internal strength that I need. Yeah. I, I never, you know, when I got married the first time, you know, you don't get married thinking that there's gonna be a divorce soon. Right. You know, you don't go into the, you know, you're thinking that, okay, now I'm gonna have this quote unquote, you know, American dream. And I had a lot of people that said to me, you had the American dream. You had, you know, everything, you know, on the outside, you know, great marriage, you know, you had the two kids in private school, the pedigree dog, the, right. the whole life. Do you have a picket fence at any point? Oh, and, and literally I did have the picket <laughs> you fence. You did have the picket fence. <laughs> I did have the pick and fit, but one thing that my parents instilled in me, because let's back up in all of this, is that I come from extremely humble beginnings. Um, I mean, when I say humble, I mean humble. Everything started 812 South Greer Street, Memphis, Tennessee. And for those who are from Memphis, they, you know, they know that that area of Memphis is called Orange Mound. 
it wasn't the suburbs. I, I, I will say that um, at the time, my mother was um, a long distance operator. So remember AT&T, hi, um, how may I connect your call? You know, what's, what's the phone number? on the switchboard, you know, literally connecting. So my mother was a long distance operator, did not have a college degree. My father was a paramedic from the fire department who worked his way up and retired as a captain. And here's our house, let me see, one, two, it was really two bedrooms and then they converted the attic into two other bedrooms, which is where my brothers, um, where their rooms were. And then my aunt and her son moved in with us all within this house. So modest, I mean, very modest, very humble beginnings, but a support system was in place. Um, my father's side of the family is entrenched into, into music and they knew the value and everything of it. And my mother who, when we say grew up dirt poor, I mean, even the dirt was poor. Wow. Right. Right, right. Okay. It was like that, but she knew, and even her mother before she passed, who had an eighth grade education, instilled the love of reading and your ticket to everything is an education. No matter how you get it, an education is your ticket to doing better. So through, you know, just like things that happen, my mother instilled this really in all, in all three of us, but I was, you know, my mother's only daughter. And her joke today is, I made this chick a little too strong because she says I am one headstrong, determined chick. And I started in music when I was five years old, kept on. By the time I was in fourth or fifth grade, I was playing two instruments and I knew that that wasn't enough. And I was like, I want to take lessons. I want to. So my mother never had a living room because it was converted into my, it was my own teachings, you know. Yeah. Well, I did start teaching 13 years old, but um, but that was my space. And this was like a part of my journey. And through that, everything was very, it was very humble. You know, one thing my dad would always say, you know, never get too high, never get too low, always give thanks, remain humble. Because at any given time, everything can be snatched away from you. And that's what happened when I went through my divorce. Like everything just went poof like right. that upside down i mean so much and i had to rebuild i honestly had to rebuild mm -hmm. rebuilt life um remarried and here i am today so going back today david what you asked me about understanding you know and explaining it for people who may be in the storm at this time oh no you're not going to understand it when you're in a storm absolutely not but now that i'm on the other side of it i can appreciate it. okay here is why i went through this because i needed to see how much fight did i have in me to reach what was going to be my goal and my new mantra for things now is um don't let a no stop you turn that no into a yes mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. Fascinating. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if this counts as two in a row or whether or not. No, you go and tee it up, man. <laughs> so just because of, of your life and, and, and the people we deal with, is some people have an experience and they have a breakdown, and some people have a breakthrough. Okay? So it could, it could have gone either way for, for – so tell me, what do you think the difference are between the people that have a breakdown and a breakthrough? Well, I mean, I had both. I had my breakdown and I had my breakthrough. So, and you know, in my breakdown, I questioned, do I have the skills to move forward? You know, why did this happen to me? All the natural feelings. And I think that when we allow ourselves to ask those questions that we can then begin to rebuild. Cause I, I mean, I really did. I had that breakdown but that breakdown was to tear the entire house down to begin to reveal something new because the foundation that I had was just, it was shaky. Wow. And I couldn't get ready for where I am today until I got those things together. You know, the, I had to internally work on Janetta because my, you know, what you see now is a very confident Janetta, but during that time, that self-confidence was at a, it, it was low. It was like at about a, a, a two or a three, you know, when I would go out into the streets, Hey, how you doing? You know, that was, it was a front, 
that was there, but I was still so empty and, and broken. And just a lot of realization, just a lot of talking to myself. Honestly, I mean, I really do. You know, I laugh now when I say, you know, if you see me talking to myself and taking notes and answering myself, I'm okay. Right, I'm good. <laughs> don't check me in anywhere. Right, don't, no, no, no. I mean, I, and it was the way that I came to process everything that was going on with me because it was like one string of events after another, you know, in my first marriage, I suffered um, stillborn 20 weeks. That was like June 1st, then June 11th, my, my, bro my dad's brother, who's my uncle, which was like my other father suddenly passes, then my mother's brother passes on the 24th of June, you know, we're moving from Florida to here to North Carolina, and it's just one thing after wow. another, and then, you got that other life change, you know, so it was a string of events and everything that was just, you know, happening. And even after remarrying and now here we go, I'm thinking life is going to balance out. But then here I go, I have this baby that's born in 26 weeks. And you get to see the beauty of life. And that's when things really, I, I say for me, turned around. Yeah. And you learn what that true persistence is about. You learn what that true patience is about. You learn, you know, when you're watching your baby in the NICU and you're going there and you're, you know, you're nurturing this little soul that's got so many machines and bee, 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 you know, every five minutes and you just watch something beautiful come out of something that could have really um, been another devastation. Mm. Wow. You, what an incredible, incredible journey. Uh, I think the, the point you made about you're asking these questions in the middle of this, you know, you know, am I good enough or who am I really in all these pieces? There was a question that came across our desk in one of our interviews with uh, someone named Jess Lipson. And he just, in the middle of one of his crises, um, his question that he now has learned to ask himself is, how could this be the best thing that ever happened to me? It's not, right? Like it doesn't feel good or whatever, but just to even okay. in the middle for those who are in the storm right now to even consider the possibility of asking the question or orienting yourself toward the question of how could this be the best thing that ever happened to me, right? Because now it's positioning you, everything you've been through has positioned you to be exactly who you are, exactly where you are. You can't really see that in the middle of the storm, but I just found that to be such an empowering mindset even while you're going through it how could this how could this work in my favor I, i'm just going to entertain the possibility of right. that so i want to hear more about now the startup journey of starting bull city music school because you kind of teed it up for us now so okay. what was that process like right you're going from 200 dollars budget as a teacher um mm. and then now transitioning into your own into your own business oh well it was a little bit scary I will say that yeah. it, it really was scary because I started with nothing. Mm -hmm. I started with nothing. I mean, cause you got to remember at this point, I haven't worked in a year. We're on one income. How are we going to do this? And this is where I had to tap into tap into myself, tap into that creativity that's been invested into you. So what are you going to do? And I, you know, I told my husband, he said, well, just write out what you can. Let's, let's go from there. And um, I tapped into the networks that I already have. And I was like, hey, everybody, I'm going to start teaching, you know, private piano lessons. And I began looking at other places that, you know, that I could rent, you know, I rented out a room like this in another music school here. And just, you know, keep building. I believe in taking toddler steps, you know, so you kind of wobbling, but you're going to keep, you're going to fall down, but you're going to get right back up and you're going to keep going, working towards something bigger. So literally started with nothing. I had a keyboard that was uh, 61 keys on it. And we know a piano has 88 keys, but oh, I had to I was gonna say, That math doesn't add up. I got it. 61. Right. I, I had to start. Such a good visual. I love it. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> But I had to start, and then um, I remember I had some things packed up, and I told myself, I was like, no, 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 I have 
the, the digital piano. Let's go find it, unpack it, 88 keys. We're going to start with that. It's, it's a start, but right. I know that I'm not going to stay in this place for long. And I think I started with maybe like five students. So it was just enough to pay the rent and maybe my cell phone bill. <laughs> right. Right. It was like just enough, but at every time I kept, you know, reinvesting in myself, reinvesting in myself, reading whatever I could that was free, you know, business journals, because I knew that I wasn't going to stay here. Mm -hmm. By the time we got ready for their first recital and I looked back and I was like, oh my God, it's like about 12 little children up there that we're going to do this. And I said, okay, I have to make this nice. What am I going to do? And I had my very first recital at my church yeah. um which is holy cross catholic church i had my very first recital there and it started out that i mean you know here's this church that seats like 350 maybe 400 people and we had maybe like 50 people in there but i said if i can be content with where i am now that i'm truly going to be overjoyed when the new blessings and everything come into place yeah. Oh, let me be content right here where I am in this process. Mm -hmm. Keep working. And I started to grow and I told my husband, I said, I think I'm gonna turn this into a full-time, full-time business. I said, because I wasn't new at what I was doing. I started teaching piano lessons when I was 13. So it wasn't new to me what to do, how to go get students, whatever. And I knew how to do that part. Yeah. And then I said, mm, this isn't going to be a hobby anymore. Because at first it was just going to be, you know, a little extra something yeah, bringing because yeah. stay at home mom, blah, blah, blah. And I said, you know what? I said, I do the quitting now. And it's time I go build up my own dream because I began to understand what generational wealth is. There you go. And I said, I need to leave something for my children to stand up on. My parents took me as far, you know, as, as they could. And it was time for me to take my children a little bit further than what I did. So let me think long-term, building generation wealth. What can I leave them that is a part of their family heritage, even if they never pick up an instrument, if they, whatever, here's what I can pass on to you. So I, I know that my children will stand taller off of their mother's back. Right. And I was okay um, with that. But again, as I was beginning to build this business, tragedy struck again. Hmm. Within my first year of this, um, I became really ill. Um, I stayed ill for about three months until, and no one could really figure out what was wrong with me. You know, staying ill for three months, I would have fevers off and on, get better, come back. And I went from, you could possibly have a cancer diagnosis to we just don't know what's wrong with you. For three months, from November to January. And it wasn't until on the last time, I spent so much time in Duke ER, it was, I know how to get real comfortable in a chair and sleep. It wasn't until the last time that I got in, they did a full body scan of me. And they said, you, we, within an hour, we got to get you on an operating table. Wow. Um, I had an ovarian cyst that ruptured and was infecting my entire body. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And this is year one of building your business. This is year one. How, year. how many years ago is this now for context for people? So, I've been in the business five years, yeah. but as Bull City Music School, three years. So this is during my time when I'm a solo teacher. Yeah, yeah. Building it. And I'm, I'm a small woman, but to go from about, you know, 115, 20 pounds, I was down to 98 pounds. I had gotten so sick. And <laughs> it's, and I, I'm gonna share this here because you never know, someone could be going through this. Right. Emergency surgery, they get me on the table. You know, I'm FaceTiming with my parents, you know, my family, because they're back in Tennessee. My older children were with their father. And, you know, and we're in, and let me say this for anybody that's going through a divorce or whatever, you can get to a good place with your, uh, with your prior. So, you know, we were in a really good place. 
knowing what was going on, I was like, okay, you're probably gonna have to keep the kids a little bit longer, blah, blah, blah. You and my current husband, y'all gotta work it out. I'm getting any, you know, operating table. Right. And um, and did they play it, nice, those two? Say what? Were they able to play nice? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. So, um, got in the table. What was supposed to have been possibly a two hour surgery ended up being a five hour surgery. Mm -hmm. They opened me up and saw that my body was filled with so much infection. Sure. Well, three months? Of, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, um, I ended up staying in the hospital during the Super Bowl. It was snowing outside. Um, I was so sick and I ended up having major surgery. My heart rate shot up, you know, really high during surgery that I could not stay on the GYN floor. They had to put me on the heart lung floor. Mm. I couldn't walk. I couldn't even lift myself up out of bed. I, I was that far just down sick and one of my my nurse well cnas that took care of me got to know me I, I was there that long um in the hospital Unreal. my family you know my husband you know come in you know we'll bring the kids and things and my face is all sunk in. i mean i was sick i was off and on you know able to sit up talk and I just remember my, my CNA coming in. And it's funny, we have a relationship now. So probably when he sees this, um, he probably shoot me a message because he was like, well, what do you do? And got to know me. And I said, you know what? When I come out of this, I was teaching piano, really happy. So well, what are you going to do? So I'm going to go back and I'm going to rebuild and I'm going to come back better. So let me fast forward a little bit. I'm at the hospital. I'm regaining, you know, health, strength, all of this stuff. And I rebranded. I had my like introduction to the world at the library. Guess who walks in the door? This guy. And his nurse. Yes. He said, I believed in you. He said, sister, you were wow. special. He said, that's why when your little stubborn tail told me you couldn't get out the bed and go walk, I was like, ah, right, sister, get up. <laughs> Let's yeah. go. You have things that you need to do. Come wow. on. Come on, sister. Yeah, the world needs you. It's not just you, right? Yeah. Right. He was like, sis, the world needs you. I mean, and you got to keep in mind, I mean, I had to have help to get up out of the bed. I'm on a walker trying to walk. And I'm like, I sound like I smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. Right. That, that's how bad of shape. I was like, am I ever going to be able to walk in? Am I ever going to be able, you know, to do everything again and you know and coming home and at that time i think my son was 10 mm. and i have the picture it's very touching but he knew that i needed to get up and walk now here's this 10 year old child because boys love their mama uh, like, come on mama yeah. you gotta get up and walk and my 10 year old son could pick me up help me get up and walk and walk behind me wow come back and say, now, you know, I do have to tell you, my son is a football player. So, <laughs> you know, um, so I had a reason to fight. I had a reason to, you know, come back. And I came back better than ever. I said, you know what? I'm going to downsize to upsize. Mm -hmm. So the clients who my husband felt comfortable with coming to our house, because keep in mind, my husband is in law enforcement. So, yeah. you know, everybody that has the background test sure. to come to the house. Um, I think I went down to about three or four that could still come to the house. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, everybody stuck with me during my illness, because as I started regaining my strength, it was my music that gave me that extra fight it, yeah. it was something about it we got the man music we, we got a relationship okay? yeah yes um, that's beyond the notes on the page gave me that fight and i would email them and they were like i thought you were sick i said yeah i'm doing this from the hospital and it's funny because one of my clients who's still with me now she said yeah a couple of those times on those emails she said i was laughing <laughs> because i could tell you it probably hit the morphine a little bit <laughs> uh. But, you know, when it was okay, I'm like, yes, y'all, please come see me because you helped me to get better. And they were like, are you sure? I was like, you know, I don't want you to always see me when I look like this. Sure. You know what it's like? Shout out to all the people who 
have been with us all. I mean, I'm talking to even my people who have been with us through those times, some of the lowest and still ride with us through it. I mean, those are, those are some really special people. And I think people yeah. that I don't thank enough. Um, yeah. So if you're watching, whoever you are, you know, yeah. who Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and it's funny, and my student, you know, this particular student, she is quick to point out to another student. She says, I'm an original. <laughs> okay. I was like, state your All point. Right. State You're your point. A copy. I'm an original. <laughs> right. No, she said, I've been here. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so now, gotten through and uh, downsized to upsize. And I believe write the vision, make it plain. Yeah. Where I wanted to go. And we just kept putting one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. Um, opened my first commercial space um, that's on 3329 Durham Chapel Hill Boulevard. Just myself, another teacher. We grew and I was able to hire two other teachers to come on board. I can't exactly remember what the number was. We had the winter concert. By the time we got ready to the spring concert, we had doubled. Wow. By the time we got ready to do another Christmas concert, we had doubled. And here we come winter, con I mean, uh, get ready to do a spring concert. So that brings us up to 2019 at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2019 at this point. And I told my husband, I said, I'm going to expand. There we go. But he said, um, okay, tell me more about it. I said, um, I think it's time that we tap into air and opportunity. So I had, I quoted him. I used his own words. Oh, that's smart. Good technique. Good technique. <laughs> yeah, he, said, he said, well, tell me more. Tell me what you're talking about. I said, um, I think in order for me to reach more people i'm gonna need to expand i said because you know i'm here in durham you know i, I got met with opposition you know because i'm i like to say i'm the most known unknown i'm not from here i don't have the connections i don't have the lineage i don't have the this the that the blah 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 blah, blah. i said but i got some so we looked 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 around and um I moved to Hillsboro, found, you know, the, the town and any time, and, and I tell everybody, what made me move to Hillsboro, a couple of reasons. One, they did not have a brick and mortar music school there, mm -hmm. did not. Two, Mayor Tom Stevens was the mayor at that time. And anytime you can get a mayor that is invested in the arts and makes it a priority, that's a no brainer right. because Everybody want to call on the artists and the musicians when they want to show, you know, when they want to be entertained, but don't want to make the investment into the education side to get that right. in. Build them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when I said it from the top down, I said, no brainer. Wow. This is where we belong. So are you living in Hillsborough now? No, I live in Durham, but I will soon be um, a resident of Hillsborough. We're going to build our forever home out there. Great. So I have, I have, I have people, who I, I'm sure you know Dave Swanson, the violin. There's all kinds of people. Yes, I know him. Yeah, he, he makes, he, anyway, he's my brother's violin teacher. But anyway. Yeah, it's not far from me. I, gotta, I have something for you because okay. you are hard way, <laughs> obviously, right? That's been your path. You're, you're, you're a survivor. You are a testament to surviving adversity. It's made you who you are. Mm -hmm. I am of the opinion, and we talked about just and I talked about it, that yeah. maybe we don't have to suffer. Uh -huh. what, what lessons or advice could you give to people to, who maybe their path's a little bit easier? They can come out the other way. In other words, what can you, what can you tell people who won't have to go through this kind of you know, difficult path that you do, we can arrive at the same place. I know. You don't want to just tell people go through hell and then be like me. So, <laughs> Pretty the, much because you can appreciate yeah. what you've gone through. You know, my husband's favorite saying is you got to have some skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Got to have some skin in the game. And I, like I tell my own children, if I hand you everything, you're not going to appreciate it. 
But when you got to go and work for something, you're going to fight for it. You're going to be more invested in it. Well, and I think what strikes me about you is you're somebody who genuinely enjoys or appreciates the journey itself. It's not just about, okay, I'm going to be happy when I end up here. And even hearing about your concert of, you know, 12 students and 50 people in this, this big church and you were happy there someone who appreciates the journey the whole way along i mean at the heights that you've achieved right now you can really appreciate and really enjoy where you are i want to know what covid has done and what advice you give for entrepreneurs who are now pivoting and finding themselves in the middle of uh well a, a pandemic that is reshaping especially brick and mortar type of businesses um, what's your what's your business move been there? How have you how have you pivoted in that? So let's go back. All uh, these life experiences that I had, they were building up for something because every time I had to pivot. So when COVID came, uh -huh. was it an interruption? Absolutely, but was it one that I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? Right. Because I was already used to having to pivot. Right. My friend Ben from California, he would say, uh, no hill for a climber. That's what he says. He's like, you know, no hill for a climber. I mean, we're, we're climbers. You know, so it's a big one, but eh, no hill for a climber. Right? So I, uh, I hear that. That's good. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like to say, um, no, I am a realist. I'm a realist and um, I'm optimistic at the same time. So you combine those two, um, you know, with everything coming. And I do have to give a little bit of disclosure here. My first husband is a physician. I hear that. That's a good one. Yep. Sorry. That was some feedback on mine. Go ahead. Oh, okay. And with everything, you know, coming, he said, y'all may want to get ready. They may be closing schools. They may be doing this. Here's what's coming. And um, so I always say you need a plan A, B, C, D, and E. Wow. So what's my best case scenario? What's my worst case scenario? And I just started with one thing and that is take some, I took three days off from teaching, told everybody, here's what I need to do. Cause I still teach. I I'm one of these people. I can't walk away from my business and just be totally a manager because I'm a teacher. I am a teacher. A, being a teacher helps me stay balanced. Yeah. So um, I took three days off and I said, all right, we got to take this online. But this wasn't something new to me because in my long range, wild dreams, it was to add a virtual component. So I'd already been, you know, kind of dancing around with it, reading. Yeah. And I said, well, ain't no time like the present. Here's what we got to do. Took right. three days off, say, okay, this is how we're going to make it work. Let's get ready to flip. Because being a musician, Okay, you never know what's gonna happen. I got my start playing in church. Or I should say in church. <laughs> right. And you never knew what was getting ready to come your way. When that person get up and say, oh, I'm gonna sing in a key of F, when they really in no key. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you learn how to, you yeah, know, just be back ready. some really beautiful memories for me. Yeah, uh, you know, just, just get ready to pivot at right. any given time. You know, you get that phone call, hey, my musician backed out. You know, we, we got to have this funeral at 11 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. We need or, somebody to come in. Right, or we have a revival service or something, something, right? Oh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> watch, look at her, look at her, look at her. Oh, that is so good. So You've been pivoting. I mean, that's... I've been pivoting. This, it wasn't new to me to have to pivot, but what was new to me was, okay, it's not just me in this pivoting now. I have my teachers, I have my employees, I have people depending on me, looking at me, what am I gonna do? We have two locations, Hillsboro, Durham. All right, everybody, we're going online. You need to get a Zoom account. We're gonna learn this. We're gonna figure this out together, communicating with everyone. This is what we have to do, I believe, in keeping everyone safe um, um, at this time. And this is just what we have to do. And of course, you know, we did have people that dropped. But I said, all right, never get comfortable where you are. Never get comfortable here. 
because you don't know what's getting ready to happen. You don't know. You don't know how long this pandemic is going to be around. What can you do to keep your business alive and going? Mm -hmm. And so I just, um, I let people know, hey, you want your kids to take music lessons with me? You know, here's music school here, you know. And so we have been able to expand out to California, wow. to Georgia, Florida, and now Tennessee, my hometown. Wow. Okay, and I feel like international could be next for you. You know, you, it, that's beautiful. Yeah, um, I'm so, not going to place any limits on my life. That's say no, that. no limits. I love that. That I'm a no limit soldier. Oh. Right? <laughs> you know oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, so anyone who's watching right now, be sure if you have any question, please type it in the chat box mm -hmm. at uh, my page. That would be the easiest for me to see it. And uh, Janetta, if you see any things come up on your end with the pl places you shared it, please do okay. so. I do want to know, um, especially now in the current climate, um, let's talk about blackness and that intersection there. So, right. So you are an entrepreneur, incredible mm -hmm. human, right. But now there's all these other intersections, right. So you're a female entrepreneur and I'm mm -hmm. sure that's had some ride to it and you are a black female entrepreneur. So you live at all of these different intersections. Would you talk, um, to specifically to that and, uh, and what your experiences have been as a black female entrepreneur, um, walking this through? Oh, we don't need a part two. <laughs> we don't need a part two. Okay, so it's been an interesting path. Um, it has, and let's go back. Here's this experiences and everything that happened to me in life. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it point blank. I went to college in Mississippi. I did my student teaching at Pearl High School in Pearl, Mississippi. Wow. Okay. You really literally should get some commendations and a medal for that. Okay, I did. I started my student teaching September 11th, 2001. I was the first black student teacher that they had um, that was from there. So, you know, that was my battlefield right there where I knew that my credentials and everything were going to get questioned. And talk about not understanding why I was going through what I was going through. You know, I graduated from a historically black college and university, let, and let's be honest, people thumb their noses at that, but take a minute and look around, you'll see that there are some phenomenal people that have come out of your historically black colleges and universities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nose got thumbed. I actually had the teeth, well, it was two vocal music teachers at the school. I was assigned to one and then there was the other one, you know, that actually turns to me and say, my institution and named another high school that's predominantly um, black school, they can't sing classical music. They can't do this. My first introduction to having racism right there in my face, my first introduction to the stereotype that black people don't do classical music. And if they do, they don't do it right. Getting into this and then my first um, job as a teacher, I was the first black choir teacher at this particular predominantly white high school, Germantown su uh, suburb of Tennessee, I mean suburb of Memphis. Never forget, man came in my room, it was open house. Sat right in front of me, leaned back, crossed his arms and said, so what makes you so qualified to teach? So having these experiences wow. that were preparing me for that fight, getting that skin, you know, really thick for what I am now that, you know, if you tell me no, I'm gonna turn it into a yes. So you're not going to stop anything right wow and these these people didn't know that beethoven was half black right you know <laughs> they didn't know that we as black people exist in a classical world too now there is a movement that's going on that i do have to put out here because you know most of the orchestras are one percent you know i mean one percent of the orchestras are people of color wow and that's a whole nother conversation within itself but those experiences help prepare me for now, you know, that when people look at me and say, 
oh, wait a minute, you're a black girl. You play classical music. That it doesn't bother me. Wow. I was like, yes, I do. Want to hear it? Right. <laughs> right. Hear it? Pretty damn good at it, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you want to hear, wow. oh, you want to question my, my teaching? Come here. Come on. Right. Come on. You want to know? Come on. And now it's, I'm, it doesn't even bother me. Right. But you have to know what you even represent being in this space is so powerful. Um, there is so much power in taking up space, mm -hmm. right? And just being in that space. And so the fact that you're able to do so confidently and it doesn't bother you is so beautiful. And for all of those who are watching you and, uh, you know, for my two daughters coming up, who, if they would want to, could actually look to somebody in this space, see someone just existing in that space, let alone all the things that you're doing on top of it. The fact that you exist at a high level in that space is resistance. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I want to add something too, because you're obviously you're a model by you're just being yourself. I really am. Just by being yourself, you're modeling something so unique that you never could have done yourself. You said, well, I want to be a model, blah, 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 blah. You know, just following your life path and being yourself has enabled you to do that. And so one, I just want to point that out and, and celebrate that with you. Yeah. Okay. And also, um, just that what you're a model for other models, like for people that are watching this to say, hey, you're not a black classical musician who raised dirt, you know, blah, blah, you know, you're not that. But, but each of us in some way, there's some uniqueness that we can bring in that breaks the model and shows, like I said, there's, like your husband said, there's no limits. There's right. no limits at all. And I think that's where I find some inspiration in addition to your story is you modeling for other models that this is who all of us are and all of us can be. And I'd like to add another part to that um, because my, the music schools, we're diverse. We're diverse racially, we're diverse gender. You know, we are what a true example of what diversity should look like. Mm. And um, I had this conversation with one of my originals <laughs> as uh, she likes to call us, but I had it with her parent. And her mother said, it was important for me to have my daughter study with you. She said, from the moment I met you, I could tell that you were a teacher because she's a teacher herself. And then um, she said, but it was important that my daughter see a black woman in a position of power and making changes because she said for my children who yes are going to enjoy some privileges simply because of the color of their skin but they're able to point out and recognize differences in other people so it was important for my daughter to be with you yeah. and with that, you know, we have a lot of conversations, you know, where we we talk very openly. And I says, for me, it's important that I have little girls in my school who, you know, have the braids, the Afro puffs, the everything. Because when we have recitals, I remember one mom saying, do I need to straighten her hair? I said, absolutely not. You better put my baby on stage with those Afro puffs, put on that stage yeah. with those braids and put those beads. And I said, make it look neat, but right. let her celebrate who she is. Yeah in this space and it's for them to be able to see identity within me but at the same time teach my other nationalities that are within the school that oh wait a minute there's other races there are other races. oh wait a minute i can actually say i have seen such and such of ethnicity or or of such and such background of such and such be able to come and do the same things that I'm doing right and that's that's important to me um, that we have this because yes um, I am Catholic but one of my students um, is of the Jewish faith and he wanted to learn a particular hymn or something so I said well come on let's go have a lesson and I went to his dad and I said okay here's the song that he wants to learn what does this mean I want to make sure that I teach this to him right what is the tone because we have to come together and learn to celebrate each other's cultures yes Life is like music. Music's made up of quarter notes, half notes, quarter rest, whole rest, 16 notes, 30 second notes. Everything is different. Everybody has a different value. But when you put it all together on music, one can't make music without the other. Right. Oh. Man, there are so many sound bites in here. This is <laughs> Just push the pause button. So I have so many ideas. Uh -huh. 
Okay, um, well, let's, let's, you want to wrap up or you want to? I to wrap up, but then stay, can you stay on with us a few minutes? Because I guarantee you, if I got 10 ideas, Justin has 20. If he has 20, I have 30. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I got to right. thank you, you know, just from, I, I didn't know who the hell you were two days ago, and now I feel <laughs> like, oh my God, you're so one of us, and we're so one of you. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. So, Justin, thank you. Thank you for having a coffee shop that she could go into so I could meet her. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And and anyway, oh, guys, can I interject real quick? Because uh, you probably heard my phone keep going off over here. Yeah. So one of the parents, because she's listening, she's watching, yeah. she says, love seeing you online. OG originals. Ha. Huh? That was one of the originals okay. that I was <laughs> All right. The OGs are in there. They've the been OGs there. are watching. So shout out. Let me let me go ahead and just shout out the, yeah. the OGs since they're watching. Um, hi, Erica. That's the mom. Uh -huh. Hi, Dave. That's the dad. And Ella, which is my baby. I've, I've totally renamed her. Her mother named her El Ella Madeline. I renamed her Ella Rebecca. And the little brother, Will. Now, you want somebody to give you political commentary? You want that little brother. Oh, yeah? Well, oh, yeah. He can give it to you. He can give it to you with all the shade. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much, Janetta, for joining us and for sharing. I really felt like with authenticity and with soul and with heart and uh, all the passion and all the brilliance that you bring to your work. Thank you for being exactly who you are. And uh, thank you, everybody who's tuning in. Join us tomorrow, Thursday, if you wish to, in our closed in entrepreneurs group, the Commonwealth. That's for entrepreneurs who really want to take their work and their life to another level, networking time. Reach out if you want uh, more info, info on that. But uh, nothing else to say. How can they find your work, though, Janetta? Okay. Um, so a couple of ways you can find me. One, you can always go to BullCityMusicSchool.com. Or if you just want to, you know, chat, rap with me, you can go to my website, um, JanettaHopkins.com. You can find me there um, if you need anything musical. Um, another way I have pivoted during this COVID is I've added a music retail store. So if you need an instrument, um, you need accessories for it, you need music, you can reach me through bullcitymusicschool.com right now. The website will be up soon, but you can reach me that way. Why not? I'm so proud. This is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being on today. Thanks Thank you all for having me. That was wonderful. Stay on. We're going we're gonna to push the pause button on the recording. Okay.